Hi everyone and welcome to this week's Archaeology Pub Quiz with Dig Ventures. Um, I'm Maya, an archaeologist and head of community here at Dig Ventures and I'm really excited to be back again hosting another pub quiz with you all. I love doing it, it's great to hang out with you all and um, to test our knowledge together a little bit. Anyway, it's a lovely sunny evening here in London in the UK and I hope that wherever in the world you're tuning in from you've got a little bit of sunshine too. But if you don't, don't worry because we're about to bring the sunshine to you with this lovely jubbly archaeology quiz. Um, to get started all we really need to do is make sure that we've got a pen, a paper, some snacks and that we know what our rounds are going to be. So first of all I mentioned snacks. I've brought with me this week some very fancy chocolate which I admit I've already had a little nibble of and a ah, lovely steaming hot cup of tea. Um, I'm really in the mood I think today more for a cup of tea and some chocolate than I am um, a pint of beer or anything like that. Anyway this week's topics our rounds are going to be as follows. Round one Pyramids. Gotta love a good pyramid question. Uh, round two is ancient sports. And round three is archaeology movies. Round four is all about LIDAR. I've got my little drone here, which you'll see making an appearance later in the quiz. <laughs> and last but not least, we've got rounds five and six. Round five is a little bit of jumbled up lettery fun, uh, anagrams, and round six is once again a mystery object for you to try and identify. So that's enough of me just talking and introducing myself. I hope you're ready. Pens, paper, snacks. <laughs> Off we go. Round one. Pyramids. Everyone's favourite piece of monumental archaeology. But do you know as much about them as you think you know? Well, we're about to find out. Here we go, question one. Which country, that's which present day country, has the most pyramids in the world? We're talking ancient pyramids obviously here. So which present day country has the most ancient pyramids in the world? Now it might not be the country that first springs to mind, so when you've thought of your answer I would urge you just to have another little think and just double check that you've got the right answer. Got it? Sure you've got it? Want another second or two just to mark over? Excellent. All right, time for question two. Which is the tallest pyramid in this picture? I'm going to show you a picture, but I want to show it nice and big so you can have a real careful look at it and try and figure this out. Which pyramid in this picture is the tallest? I'm going to get out of the way for a second, excuse me. So one of the pyramids in this picture is the Great Pyramid of Giza, the tallest pyramid in the world. The question is, which one is it? Great, you've had a nice good look at that picture. I think you've got your answer. Seems a bit obvious, doesn't it? Well, we'll find out at the end. Third question is also related to the picture that we've just seen. So obviously one of those pyramids in that picture is the Great Pyramid of Giza. How many blocks do you reckon we used to build it? Now I'm not just going to leave this as an open-ended question because it's you'll have about as much luck as trying to guess the number of sweeties in a jar. So I'm going to give you four options. Your four options are 23,000, 230,000, 2.3 million or 23 million? What do you reckon? One of those whacking great pyramids, how many blocks was used to build it? Great. Question four. So, again, Great Pyramid of Giza, 147 metres tall, and it was the tallest building in the world for 3,800 years. Can you name the first building 
that was torn in it. So that's which was the first building that was taller than the Great Pyramid of Giza. If you know when that building was built, you can have a bonus point. All right, time for the last question in the pyramids round. Kind of exciting. This is another picture question. I want you to tell me, firstly, where is this pyramid? And second of all, what was found underneath it? Fairly recently, like in the last few years, what was found underneath this pyramid for a bonus point? Obviously, the more accurately that you can tell me um, where this pyramid is and what was underneath it, the more impressed I'll be. Still just a maximum of two points for this question. All right, and that's the end of round one. Well done, everyone. Round two, must be sport, judging by this. Um, now, I know there's probably quite a few of you who are thinking, oh no, sports, I don't really know anything about sports, I don't really play sports, I don't really enjoy sports. Well, the thing is that in the past, loads of people did, just like today. And um, there's actually quite a surprising amount of archeological evidence for the kind of games that people played, and even for the size of the crowds that would be drawn to watch them. I mean, you only have to think of something like the Colosseum, but then there are other other places where you find actual playing fields where sports are played and people would gather and come and watch. Um, so yeah, we've got a round here all about ancient sports and the kind of things people did to pass the time in the ancient world. So first question, obviously the biggest, most famous sporting event in the world today is the Olympics. And the original Olympics were obviously held in ancient Greece. Um, but which god? Which god were they held in honour of? See, it's not going to be such a bad round after all, is it? I'm asking which ancient Greek god uh, the Olympics were held in honour of. Um, if you need a clue, the statue to this god became one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Which god were all the sports dedicated to? Great question to another Olympics one. So the first woman to be listed as an Olympic victor is Kainiska of Sparta. Now she was a Spartan princess and the first time she won an Olympic um, challenge, athletic competition, whatever you call them, um, was in 396 BC. Question is, what was her sport? What was her sport? First woman to ever win at the Olympics. What was her sport? Kainiska of Sparta. Now that is a name you should remember. Kainiska of Sparta in 396 BC. She won at the Olympics. Bear in mind this was actually a time when women weren't technically really allowed to even take part. She won. But at which sport? Great, so time for question three in the ancient sports category. Where, where was golf first invented? Where was golf first invented? Okay, all right, and I'll give you a bonus point if you can tell me which century the earliest records of golf go back to. Where was it invented in what century? Okay. 
yeah, if you got it. I want to make a golf pun, but none are springing to mind. <laughs> right, question four. This little guy is playing a sport called Chunky. Now this is a game that dates back to about AD 800, 600 even, about AD 600. Um, and the rules are basically that you have two teams and you take it in turns to roll a stone disc. You can see he's in the process of rolling down on the ground there. And then you throw spears at where you think it's going to land. So it's basically a bit like balls or patunk, but with added spear throwing. And, and frankly, I think if there was any ancient sport that I was going to try, it might be this one. It sounds like a great deal of fun. But anyway, my question for you is, where was this game played? Which region of the world was this game played? The more specific you can be, again, the more impressed I will be. Um, but there's only one point available for this question. Great. I think we're about ready for the very last question in the ancient sports round. Um, this one well, have a look at this picture. You can see it comes from ancient Egypt. It's a picture of some people playing a sport. It was a very, very popular pastime among um, clearly here who are fishermen. But what is the sport? What is the sport that they are playing? What is happening in this picture? Now, I don't expect you to know the ancient Egyptian name for this sport, but just sort of tell me what you think it is. You might have to use your imagination a little bit. And it's not actually that dissimilar um, from a very popular British medieval, European medieval game that was played. All right, I'm going to give you a few more seconds just to contemplate this. And that's it. That is the end of round two. Gosh, I wish I had brought some popcorn um, because this is the movies round. Um, you know, there are so many films that feature archaeologists. They are such a good plot device for disturbing ancient evils that then come back to life and then they have to be pursued and chased down and put back in their sarcophagus um, or some such thing. Anyway, there are loads and loads of films that feature archaeologists. Some are great and are really enjoyable, others are absolutely awful um, and unforgivable. But it's time to test your knowledge on films featuring archaeologists or with a key archaeological plot twist. Um, so, question one. Which animal is Indiana Jones afraid of? Which animal is Indiana Jones afraid of? That should be so easy, come on. What does, question two, Indiana Jones punch? What does Indiana Jones punch in Raiders of the Lost Ark? Okay, okay, I'm kidding. Those aren't the real questions. They are way too easy. Um, if you haven't seen Indiana Jones films, not to worry. You're forgiven for not knowing the answers to them. Um, the actual questions begin now. All right, question one. Which 2017 film, also starring Harrison Ford and Ryan Gosling, basically hinges, the entire plot, basically hinges on the results of geophysical survey carried out by a drone to a depth of a whopping 
30 metres and which finds the body of a woman buried deep under a tree. So which film, when you, when you watch it again, if you go and watch this film again, you'll notice that the, the crucial plot twist, everything hinges on a geophysical survey that was carried out by a drone to a depth of 30 metres. It's specifically mentioned in the plot, in the script even, and finds the body of a woman buried deep under a tree. Made in 2017, starring Harrison Ford uh, and Ryan Gosling. Some people loved it, some people didn't really like it. I'm kind of on the fence, I didn't really know. But I did get very excited when I saw the geophysical survey results in the film. Right, I think that's enough time for you to contemplate that. You can always come back to it a little bit later. Um, so the second question on archaeology movies is this. Which 2012 film, directed by Ridley Scott, begins when two archaeologists called Charlie and Elizabeth discover a clue to the origins of mankind and go on an intergalactic expedition where they find a monolithic statue of a humanoid head? Lots of other things happen in the movie too, but that's where it starts. Two archaeologists find a clue to the origins of mankind, set off into space to find out more. Okay, I think that's enough time to contemplate that question. Question three. Which professional footballer turned actor stars in Legend of the Bog? An absolutely bloody awful film about two archaeologists pursuing a 2,000 year old Irish bog body that has come back to life. That's which professional footballer ex-professional footballer turned actor stars in Legend of the Bog. I think I should put my review on IMDb, don't you? Absolutely bloody awful. Wasn't great. Was quite funny though. Just think about it. Which, I mean, how many ex-professional footballers turned actors are there really? Yeah, him. It was him. All right, question four. What is the name of the real life temple that famously features in Tomb Raider? Here's a little picture for you. What's the name of that temple in real life? It's a real life existing temple. If you don't know the exact name of the temple, I will accept um, the country that it's in for half a point. Half a point for the country, a full point for the name of the temple. Yeah, okay. Last question in the movies round. Um, right. Another picture to show you. This time I'm going to show it nice and large, so I'm going to get out of the way again. Just a moment. There you go. So this early medieval monastery was one of the filming locations for Star Wars. Um, it was in Star Wars The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi. It's where Luke Skywalker was hiding out for a little bit. Um, where is it? What is it? What is this? Beautiful, stunning, early medieval monastery. Mm. 
this is definitely one of those places I would love, 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 love to go. It's just stunning. Um, you have to go up hundreds of steps cut into the rock and you get to the top it's just it just looks awe-inspiring absolutely awe-inspiring you can see why um early monks would have wanted to go there it would have felt to them like they were reaching the edge of the world just amazing all right that's it for um Movies, let the credits roll. Round four, lasers. I mean LIDAR, really. Um, so LIDAR, as I'm sure loads of you know, means light detection and ranging. And it's basically where you get a plane or a drone and you fly overhead like this firing lasers down at the earth the whole time the lasers bounce back you record the distance um, and then you use a bit of fancy computer software and maths and do some funny things and what you're left with is a beautiful topographical survey of the ground surface below you now over the last five or ten years archaeologists have absolutely fallen in love with this method because it's really really good at revealing hidden lumps and bumps that you can't necessarily see with the naked eye so it helps you to find sites that you might not otherwise discover um, maybe because they're covered in vegetation or maybe because it's in a really hard to reach place but either way it's a technique that really brings out the detail and it's non-intrusive and it's fantastic and um, over the last few years archaeologists have been making some really tremendous discoveries with this technique and um, I'm basically going to show you some of them and it's going to be your job to figure out what they are. So what I want from you for one point for each one that I show on the screen, I want you to tell me the name of the site. Okay, ready? Bing, 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 bing. Fantastic. You've done it. It's the end of round four. Okay, here we are. It is round five. And it's time to jumble up our letters, mix our words around and have a little bit of fun with anagrams. So I've got three anagrams for you and each one can be rearranged into the name of a famous, very famous, archaeological site or ancient landmark. I'm going to give you about 20 seconds to have a go at each one and then we'll see where we are at the end. See how many you have managed to get right. Okay, let's go with the first one. Here we go. And here's the second one.
This one seems really quite appropriate for what the ancient landmark or archaeological site here actually is. It seems, um, yeah, very appropriate. Maybe even a little bit of a clue. Here is your third and final anagram. Now there is a kind of abstract connection here with the site, but I wouldn't get hung up on it because it's very tenuous. Um, have a go, see if you can guess uh, which ancient landmark or archaeological site this one is. And that brings us to the end of round five. No! It's the last round, round six. But it's the best round, my favourite round. Mystery object. Um, here it is. Let me show you in full glorious greedy. Let it spin. So just as a clue, this artefact for scale is probably about half the size of my head. Um, I don't really want to give you any other clues. I just want to see if you can figure it out. It's not connected to anything we've covered in this quiz so far. It is a bit out there. Um, but if you know me, you know the kind of archaeology I like. Um, and that might help you figure out what this might be. I hope you've all had loads of fun uh, with the questions and you've had plenty of time to come up with some good answers. We are now going to go to a brief intermission and we'll come back for the answers. We're back after the ads. I hope you enjoyed the little break and seeing what's coming up. Um, it's time for the best bit of the quiz. The answers. What did you get right? What did you get wrong? And what are the correct answers to the things you didn't know? Um, before we start, I'd just like to say that don't worry too much about points. Um, if you only got a couple right, that's fine because we're about to embark on a fun learning experience where we find out all the right answers. Um, I think it's more important that we learn something than we get everything right. So, are we ready? I'm ready. I've got my fresh hot cup of tea. On with the show. So, round one, pyramids. Question one, which country has the most pyramids? Now the answer is not Egypt. I'm sure lots of you knew the answer to this. Um, the answer is actually Sudan. Sudan has 350 pyramids, 350. And they range in size actually from really big to absolutely tiny. And um, the smallest one is actually just 30 inches tall. Um, it's the area where most of them are, it's known as Nubia, and was home to three Kushite kingdoms starting in about 2500 BC. And later on, these kingdoms actually competed strongly with Egypt. In fact, one of the later kings, Pie or Pai, um, actually united the entire Nile Valley in about 728 BC, and his descendants ruled as pharaohs of the 25th dynasty. Now that is far more information than you asked for, but um, I just think it's fascinating, it's wonderful isn't it, that Sudan has 350 pyramids and one really small one. Anyway, question two, which is the biggest pyramid in this picture? Yeah, it did seem a bit obvious, didn't it, but it was a trick question of course. Um, so actually this angle that I've showed you is the most common one that you see, it's where all the tourists like to take their pictures from. But the Great Pyramid of Giza is not the one in the middle, as most people assume, because it looks biggest in this picture. If you actually have a look at this other picture that I've got to show you here, 
we can see that it's all a matter of perspective. So the tallest one is actually the one that's furthest away. And that is the Great Pyramid of Giza, or the Pyramid of Khufu, or Cheops, as it is also known. Um, and just to prove my point, just to show that I'm not making this all up, here is a photo of all of the pyramids from a different angle, from the other side. And now you can see the one in the foreground is the biggest. Now here's a fun fact for you. Um, so I've been saying the biggest pyramid here, um, sometimes saying tallest. Um, so the pyramid, the Great Pyramid of Giza is in fact the tallest pyramid in the world, but the biggest pyramid it is not. In fact, the biggest pyramid in the world by volume rather than height is actually the Great Pyramid of Cholula, which is an ancient Aztec temple in Puebla, Mexico. And its base is four times larger than Giza's and it's nearly twice the volume massive. Not as tall, but much, much bigger in terms of volume. So that leads us nicely into question three. How many blocks were used to build the Great Pyramid of Giza? The answer is an estimated 2.3 million blocks. 2.3 million. Phenomenal. Right. Question four. At 147 metres, as we've seen, tall, the Great Pyramid was the tallest building in the world for 3,800 years. But which was the first building that was taller than it? The answer is Lincoln Cathedral. Its spire is 160 metres tall and it was built in about 1300s. So this was a question that came with a bonus point attached and that was the date. So if you got Lincoln Cathedral as your answer, correct. One point. If you got Lincoln Cathedral completed in about 1300, two points. Well done you. Last question on pyramids. Right, here we go. Where is this pyramid? And for a bonus point, what did archaeologists recently find underneath it? This pyramid is actually Feathered Serpent Pyramid from Teotihuacan in Mexico. It's about 2,000 years old and is the third largest pyramid at Teotihuacan. So for a bonus point then, what did archaeologists recently find underneath it? And the answer is a tunnel. Now this wasn't just any old tunnel. It was a tunnel filled with incredible artifacts, so many, I'm not going to start listing them now. What I'm going to do is put a link to them in the comments so that you can go away and read more about it afterwards. But some really extraordinary discoveries. One of the most incredible, I think, is that there was a chamber and it looks as though you can see the night sky because it's got this like glow in the dark mineral that they've purposely placed to look like the night sky in there. It's, it's incredible. Anyway, as I said, link in the comments, go and read more about it afterwards. So, Right, that was round one. How are you all doing? Feeling good? Got some of those right? I hope so. Anyway, round two, ancient sports. So the first question was, which god was the original Olympics held in honour of? And the answer is, of course, Zeus. And his statue was, in fact, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Nice. Question two. The first woman to be listed as an Olympic victor is, as we know, Kainiska of Sparta, but what was her sport? It was the four horse chariot race. Um, she trained the horses. They won. Simple as. Fantastic. Question three. Where was golf first invented? So a lot of people will instinctively want to say 16th century Scotland, but actually a ball hitting game is recorded in ancient China at least 600, five or 600 years earlier. In fact, the rules are remarkably similar to modern golf, right down to the number of clubs you can use. And it became really, really popular during the Song Dynasty, who lasted until the 12th century. And it's thought that it's from there that later on this game came over to Europe. But um, yeah, it's widely thought that golf was actually, contrary to popular belief, was actually invented in China. 
Question four. So this little guy, we saw him earlier, he's playing a sport called Chunky. Um, it's that kind of version of balls where you get to throw spears at the same time. Uh, I want to have a go. Maybe we should organise a little tournament at some point. Um, but for now, the answer that you're all waiting for is the fact that he comes from um, a ruined ancient city in North America called Cahokia, Mississippi. It's part of the Mississippi culture. Um, the remains of the city are incredible and they also include a huge arena where obviously loads and loads of people came to watch the sport being played at huge events. Um, and variations of the game were played across North America. So you can have your point if you said North America, Cahokia or Mississippi. If you said Cahokia, I'm really, really, really impressed. Question five, ancient sports. Which ancient sport is going on here? Now, um, yeah, this is one of those questions that I didn't really expect anyone to know the answer to, but I thought was just too great um, not to have a good guess at. You can see that there's a couple of boats here full of fishermen, and my question to you was, what are they doing? What sport are they playing? What game are they playing? Um, the answer is, they are jousting. So fisherman jousting or boat jousting was really popular in ancient Egypt. Um, it was generally the sport of poor fishermen and involved two teams of boatmen who would square off using their hands or feet to knock the other team off balance and send them into the water. Um, some descriptions say it was a bit more like brawling and it got quite physical. But so it looks like fun, but maybe not one that I want to try myself. I'm happy to watch you have a go though if you like. Right, round three, movies. Um, so I did include two sort of joke questions. Um, which animal is Indiana Jones afraid of? Any self-respecting archaeologist should know that it's snakes. Um, and what did he punch in Raiders of the Lost Ark? Come on now, Nazis, of course, we all know it. Um, it's one of the reasons why I like him. There are many reasons I don't like Indiana Jones, but that is one of the reasons I do. Anyway, the real questions about movies. Which 2017 film, also starring Harrison Ford and Ryan Gosling, basically hinges on the results of a geophysical survey carried out by a drone to a depth of a whopping 30 metres and which finds the body of a woman buried deep under a tree. One last chance to have a guess. It's a big film, big, big film. It was Blade Runner 2049. Yeah, the whole plot hinges on a geophysical survey. Um, so, Question two for movies. Which 2012 film directed by Ridley Scott begins when two archaeologists called Charlie and Elizabeth discover a clue to the origins of humankind and then sent, set off on an intergalactic expedition where they find a monolithic statue of a humanoid head? It is, of course, Prometheus. Prometheus. Okay, so question three of movies. The question was which professional Footballer turned actor stars in Legend of the Bog, a film about bog bodies that come back to life. Um, dreadful, but kind of amusing. Anyway, the clue was in professional footballer turned actor, and the answer is, of course, Vinnie Jones. What is the name of the temple that is featured in Tomb Raider? It's Tar Prom. And it's near Angkor, part of the Angkor complex and culture and civilization, and it's in Cambodia. I think I said that you could have uh, half a point if you got Angkor slash Cambodia right, and if you didn't know the exact name of the temple, you could have half a point. You get the full point if you know the name of the temple. Last but not least for the movies round is this one, this beautiful site, the one that I really, really, really would like to go and visit one day. So this is an early medieval monastery and it was used as one of the filming locations for Star Wars The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi. It is seven miles off the coast of Ireland and it is called Skellig Michael. Now Skellig Michael is, it's a very rocky island as I said off the coast and a bunch of monks kind of went and set up a community there um, around 
AD 600 and they built these just phenomenal little stone beehive huts. They're circular on the outside but the really remarkable thing is that um, on the inside they're square. Kind of weird. Anyway again this is another one of those situations where I could just go off on one about this amazing site so instead of doing that I'm going to put a link in the comments so that you can read more in your own time. So round four. LIDAR or lasers. Um, here we go. The answers are Stonehenge. Yeah, you can see the avenue really clearly. It's amazing. The detail is fantastic. Um, the next one is Angkor Wat, Cambodia. Now this is fascinating. Um, lots of people, I'm sure many of you guessed this right because it's quite distinctive. Um, lots of people probably know Angkor because of the temples um, and they're really famous. But in the last few years, LIDAR surveys actually revealed that these temples were surrounded by a sprawling urban network. Now when we think of these temples, we tend to think of them on their own. But um, that's the equivalent of thinking that St Paul's Cathedral was on its own without noticing the city around it. In fact, by looking at what the LIDAR surveys revealed, archaeologists um, think that this complex was home to several hundred thousand people. Anyway, next one. This is Tikal. This is in Guatemala. This is a Mayan citadel and LIDAR again, um, although some of the temples and bigger monument complexes were known before, LIDAR actually revealed another 60,000 structures associated with this complex. 60,000, um, all dating to around AD 600 to 850, so sort of early medieval time, around the time of the early medieval monastery that we've been digging on Lindisfarne for the last few years. Kind of amazing, really. Um, anyway. This next one is a little bit cheeky because it's not technically LIDAR, it's actually satellite imagery that was collected by um, NASA and analysed by Sarah Parkak, but I thought it would be a nice one to include. This is actually Tanis in Egypt, which was the capital city um, of Egypt in about 1000 BC and is where um, the pharaohs known as the silver pharaohs were buried in silver coffins, would explain the name. Um, the last one is, of course, Holy Island, which is where we've been digging. Nice. Right, here we go, round five. Here are your answers. Had to include it, how could I not? The next one is, now this was one that I said was a little bit of a clue, and obviously it kind of is, um, a freestone circle, certainly a cubic, and certainly a place for reverence, no doubt. The last one, last but not least, whirl a sandal. Now that is, of course, Hadrian's wall. Um, I said there was a very tenuous connection, and I think that's just because I associate sandals with Romans, really. Sorry, that's probably a bit of a red herring. Anyway, well, a sandal, Hadrian's Wall. And here we are, right at the very end of the quiz, the um, final round, round six, mystery object. Did you manage to guess? I would love to see your guesses in the comments. What did you get? What do you reckon this is? Yeah, I can see some great guesses coming through. I like, I like the way you think. I like the way you think. Um, all right, I'm not going to mess around anymore. I'm just going to tell you what it is. So this artifact was um, actually found in Yorkshire in a cave um, and it dates back to about 120,000 years ago. This was a time when animals like rhino and hippo and lions and giant deer and all sorts of strange beasts um, roamed the Yorkshire landscape. This is actually the tooth from a young straight tusked elephant. It's quite amazing really. I said it was about half the size of my head, which is, yeah, accurate. Elephants have massive teeth and this is 
one of them. It would probably have still been erupting from the jaw at the time that the poor little critter died. Um, and it was found in Victoria Cave in what is known as a hyena bone bed because lots of hyena bones and other animal bones were found there. Quite remarkable, really. So again, I don't know how many of you will have got that right. I hope some of you did, or at least made a good guess. Um, I will accept tooth of another animal, similar similar animal, um, because yeah, it's quite hard. It's quite a hard one to guess. So if you say something like tooth of a rhino or a hippo or something, you can have a point on me. Anyway, it's time to add up all of your scores. There are twenty seven points in total available in this quiz. What did you all get? Don't be shy, don't be shy, come on, what did you get? It looks like you actually did pretty well to me. Um, I mean, I know that I found some of the other quizzes that, um, I found Lisa's quiz, quiz quite hard, I found Nat's quiz quite hard. I know that I'm gonna find Manda's quiz next week pretty hard. Um, we all have different specialist areas, we all know, have different bodies of knowledge, and we're just really happy to be here sharing everything we know with you um, in this kind of fun and kind of delightful way. Um, so I'm very proud of you all, proud of you for taking part, proud of you for getting some points, some of you many points. Well done. Well done everyone just for being here, having a go and most of all for enjoying yourself and learning with us. Um, that's kind of about it for the end of the quiz. Um, We've got more coming up. We hope you'll join us again next week. Uh, we hope those of you that are taking part in the virtual field school are really 